is in. Lord God, soften the hearts. Lord God, open the minds. Lord God, unstop those ears. And Lord God, let the people of God receive this word with a hundredfold return of fruit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank God. And amen again. All right, let's give the Lord another shout. Come on, we need to have great expectations. Great expectations. Glory to God. Somebody say something great. It's going to happen. Amen. Amen. In the book of Deuteronomy, chapter number 28, we find uh, the text for our series that we're in, our Sunday series. And it reads on this wise it says, Now it shall come to pass. Good God Almighty, I love the fact that the Lord can't lie. When he says shall, it's, it's going to be. Now it shall come to pass. But wait a minute now. There's another word there. And right after that it says if. Somebody say if. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. That's a, that, that the Lord put that in there. He letting you know that there's a condition. If you diligently obey the voice of the Lord your God to observe carefully all his commandments which I command you this day that the Lord your God will set you high above all nations of the earth and these blessings shall come upon you and overtake you. I can't wait till I get to that lesson. Boy, that's gonna be a that's gonna be a good one. Some somebody say overtake me. Overtake me. And, but then the next word then again is if you obey the voice of the Lord your God. Church, I'm teaching from the life changing life building life blessing series simply entitled what? If I just I just believe that for the next several weeks, everybody who listens to the teaching that is flowing through me will be walking around talking about if, if because remember I told you I want you to see the if in everything. It's there. It's there. It's implied. It's implicit. It is there. So we are teaching from this wonderful series entitled If and. Uh, Let's have a little review and we'll get on to the new information. First of all, in lesson number one, which was entitled Conditions and Consequences, Conditions and Consequences, we learned a couple of quick little things. And that was, first of all, we found out that if deals with two things. It deals with uh, choice and conditions, or conditions and choices. You can say it like that. God, we learned, sets the conditions and the consequences. God sets the conditions and the consequences. Another way of saying that would be to say that God is in charge of. God is in charge of the conditions and the consequences. And then man is in charge of the choices. And then somebody say, somebody say, I'm in charge of the choices. <laughs> Don't get it twisted. You're in charge, all right, but but just in charge of the choices. You're not in charge of the conditions, nor are you in charge of the consequences. It's just like, just like a lot of natural laws. You know, you're driving down the street. You, you're not in charge of the, the speed limit and everything. Somebody else did that. You know, the lawmakers did that. But you're in charge of whether or not you're gonna abide by it. You're in charge of whether or not you're gonna follow the speed limit. But the, 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 but the conditions, and the consequences are already built in. Now you cannot follow it and end up killing yourself or somebody. You cannot follow it and end up getting a ticket, right? And those tickets cost these days, don't they? But, uh, but, you, but you can't choose. And it's the same thing with anything. Now, the other thing we learned in the series was that uh, we, we, we learned that this spiritual principle uh, that includes if is really the spiritual principle of sow and reap. Uh, spiritually, we call it sow and reap because God said that uh, every seed reproduces after its kind. That's Genesis uh, 1, chapter 1, verse 11, 12. So in other words, like I was telling you earlier, good seed in good ground brings forth what? Good fruit, all right? But the question is, you know, are you sowing good seed? And then are you sowing it in good ground? But the, but, the, but the condition and consequences is already set in place. So let's go back to the beginning, back to the garden. Somebody say, back to the beginning. Back to the beginning. 
That's where we're going to start. And that's where we're going to stay today. I, I don't know how long we're going to be in the garden, but we were there last week, and we're going to be there this week because there's some things that we really got to understand. We have to understand that this, this if that I'm teaching you about happened at the very beginning. And we need to go back to the beginning because if you want to understand a thing, you always have to go back to the origin of a thing. Can I get an amen, somebody? You want to understand a thing, you've got to understand its origin. So we're going to go back to the garden. We're going to go back to uh, the first man. We're going to go back to the first woman. And we're going to go back to the first law. And the first law included the first if. Okay, here it is. So it, 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 it read like this. In the garden, it said it like this. If, somebody say if. Yeah. Now, y'all say it like you mean it. Say if. Yeah. If you eat of the tree of life, and I'm kind of paraphrasing it. We know it was the tree of, 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 of life and then the tree of the <laughs> fruit of good and evil. But basically, it all comes down to one thing. If you eat of the tree of life, uh, excuse me, that's not right. If you eat, it's supposed to say, if you eat of the tree of death, you shall surely die. Okay, if you eat of the tree of life, you'll live, and you eat of the tree of death, you shall surely die. Somebody say if. Yeah. Okay, so that was the first if. The first if was, if you eat of the tree of life, you'll live, and if you eat of the tree of death, excuse the typo, you will die. Now, here we go. Uh, the devil wants you to do three things we learned last week. He wants you to, he wants you to what? Listen. He wants you to look, and then he wants you to what? He wants you to leap. In other words, he wants you to, the first thing he wants you to do is listen. That, that's, that's, that's the beginning of trouble right there. Listen to God and what he says. But, but so many of us, we, isn't it interesting, we listen to the devil, but it's through someone else. Somebody going to get that tomorrow. In other words, the Bible says in the garden, the devil showed up as a serpent. And even though a lot of us, you know, if we see a snake today, scares the you know what out of us, we don't mess with snakes. But back in the garden, this was before the snake uh, was looked at as an as a ugly thing. The, the snake was upright, and it was beautiful and attractive because out of all the animals, it could talk. And it's talking to this woman. So, so the first thing is he wanted her to listen. Well, that's your first mistake when you're dealing with the voice of the devil. And the devil speaks through agents. He speaks through people. So you have to be careful when you're in the beauty shop. You have to be careful when you're in the barber shop. You have to be careful when you're in the locker room. You have to be careful when you're online. I mean, we got a whole different society now. Everybody got an opinion and everybody's online. You have to be careful because if you start listening to a lie, that lie will draw you in. So first of all, she listened. Then she looked. In other words, he, he said, no, you, you, you won't die if you eat of that fruit. And then the next thing that happened after she listened, she went to look. What did she look at? She looked at the fruit. She went and started looking at that fruit. How many of us have gotten ourselves messed up because we kept gazing and focusing on the wrong thing? Uh, I don't know if you realize it, but there are three main gates to your life. And I just told you about the first one. That was the ear gate. You got to be very careful what comes in your ears. Because you keep hearing a certain thing, and then you keep hearing it, why do you think it says faith come by hearing? Lies come by hearing too. You know, you got a lot of people right now, they're just inundated in conspiracy theories. Do you know why somebody's inundated in a conspiracy theory? Because they keep hearing a lot of it. A guy, guy came to me uh, a few weeks back and told me, he said, you know, he said, Pastor, he said, I really made a mistake. And I said, how? He said, I, I clicked on one of these things about, you know, a certain conspiracy theory. He said, ever since then, my emails just got <laughs> all the conspiracy theories in the whole world. Isn't it interesting how you can click one little thing which shows your, because the whole way that society is programmed now 
is programmed to to uh, to respond to your interest. Yeah. Yeah. Anybody know? That's that's technology today. Even when you're watching a movie, you watch a movie. I noticed when I was watching a movie, that was interesting. I was watching a movie, and underneath the movie it says, "More like this." Right. Come on, somebody, talk to me. You know, if you're on uh, Prime, Amazon Prime, whatever, it says, "Watch more like this." What they're saying is, we got an algorithm, we got a whole system here that if you like this, then we'll give you more like this. So if you like, you know, conspiracy theories, then. Or you know it, your, your email and your inbox will be flooded with them. After a while, you believe, you'll start believing that you don't exist. I'm just saying. All right, so now, so now the devil wants you to listen. Somebody say ear gate. The devil wants you to look. Somebody say eye gate. And then, of course, that third gate is, is, the, is the mouth gate. Because then you start saying what he says. Listen, you know, like I told you last week, the stylistic says stop, look, and listen. But the devil says listen, look, and leap. He wants you to listen so that it gets in your heart. Then he wants you to start gazing at it. You know, uh, uh, there's some things that, you know, what do you think, think all these commercials about? Man, I'm telling you, watch TV, all these commercials, they're all trying to get your money. They're trying to get in your pocket. And, and you start, you know, you start looking at this stuff, you say, you know, I told my wife one day, I told her, I said, baby, stop talking about what we need. You know, she, she, she'll look at something and say, you know what, honey? She'll say a commercial say, yeah, you know what? We need to get that. I said, no, we don't need to get that. <laughs> Somebody said, there's a difference between needs and wants. See, really, I mean, it's a lot of stuff out there you look at, and, and, you, and, and, and she just told you that she stays up late at night. They did a study on that. They told you that most... The, the, the way they get most people is late, it's something that goes on your brain late at night, they say, where you're more susceptible to buy. I'm just being honest with you. This is a study they did. They said that at late at night, that's why you get all these infomercials and everything, and they have all this stuff on there. And, and now, of course, it's so easy because pre even, even uh, pre-pandemic, we'd be going out to the stores to buy. Now, even the person that never did Amazon before, Everybody get boxes every day now. Every stuff's been delivered at your house. So late at night, you don't have to go anywhere. You just, oh, we need that, Clint. <laughs> Honey, we need that. I'm asleep. We need that, she said. And I said, why wouldn't we do that? I told you we needed that. I was asleep over there on the other side of it. Clint, you, you know, your phone, Clint. There you go. So somebody say, listen, look and leap. That's the devil's plan. This is lesson number two. We're going to get to the new information. That was it for the review. Give the Lord a hand praise for the review. That's a good little short review. All right, here we go. This is lesson number two of the series If. And boy, oh boy, fasten your seatbelt for this one. This is entitled Defeating Devilish Division. Now, some of you may have seen where I put an email out earlier this week, and I told you, I said I, I wanted as many couples are uh, married or unmarried couples, however you dating, checking each other out, whatever, one, if they're believing to be married, whoever you, however you can fit into this thing about relationships. I wanted to have as many couples today as I possibly could because Lord told me this was a word for uh, relationships. Somebody say, I, I, I can hear you, Pastor. Somebody say, I hear you, Pastor. Say, talk to me today, Pastor. Need a little help, Pastor. If you listen, if you're in a relationship or want to be in a relationship, this message is for you. All right, now watch this. <laughs> Defeating devilish division. First thing I want you to know is that disobedience to what God said leads to sin. That's an obvious thing, right? God told them, don't eat from that tree. Isn't it interesting? There was only one tree he told them not to eat from. Isn't that something? Again, going back to the garden helps us to understand the ways of God. God is really trying to tell us. Man, this is good. I thank you, Holy Ghost, for you telling me this. God is really trying to tell us that, that he's a good God. And the things that he allows you to do uh, are so much greater than the things that he disallows you to do. I hope somebody gets it. In other words, watch this. 
God says, you can eat of all the trees. Just not that one right over there. And then here comes the devil, and the devil says, he won't let you eat that tree. What is the point? The devil wants you to focus on what God is prohibiting you from as opposed to what God is uh, allowing you to. Are you hearing what I'm saying? It's just like a child. You tell the child, you know, you can do all this stuff, and, and they find that one thing, but you won't let me, you know, eat some sweets. You won't let me eat the, the, the cookie before dinner. Well, you got all this other stuff, but that's all you can see, and now you got an attitude. And that's what the devil said. He said, but God, in other words, it's, it's an attack on God's goodness. God said, you're living in this garden, rent-free and mortgage-free, it has the greatest weather. You know, the plants, basically, the, 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 the water comes up from the ground. They water themselves. You got, all, you got these four rivers. There's gold all and silver and everything all around you. He says, now you got, you got this woman. He says, things are so pure and so holy, you don't even need clothes. You don't have any debt. Somebody said, oh, praise the Lord. You don't need any credit cards. You have, you, there's no sickness. This was, this was a, this was a, a, a precursor to what? To heaven. That was heaven on earth. There's no sickness. Somebody say, no death. No sickness. Where do I sign up? And, 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 and they had all this stuff, but it's just one little law they couldn't do. So they disobeyed, and the Bible says disobedience leads, leads to sin. Now watch this. Then here's this progression. Sin, disobedience leads to sin. Sin leads to, there it is, the wrong vision and the wrong focus. There it is right there. Sin leads to the wrong vision and the wrong focus. As long as they were right with God, every day was great. As soon as they sinned, they realized, uh-oh, something's wrong. We're naked. Uh-oh, something's wrong. She, she, she did something. No, he did something. No, it, everything changed. The moment that they sinned, everything changed. You know, I've been on uh, uh, vacations uh, to some nice places in my life. I don't know if you all, you know, when you go on vacation, it's kind of like that uh, commercial uh, they got out. I don't know, what was that, Speedy or something? They say, at the end of your life, you won't remember uh, the, the things that you bought. You don't remember the cars you bought. You don't remember the clothes you bought. But what you will remember is the places that you went to. See, they're trying to get your money, too. But they're basically talking about your vacations. And I've been to some nice vacations. And... Uh, has some nice uh, tropical places I've been to. And sometimes I've been there and the people who were there said, had a sour spirit like, yeah, it's just another day in paradise, kind of satirically, you know. And, and I'm like going, well, wow, here's all this nice stuff. But in their heart, they're not happy. See, see, true joy is not all the stuff around you. It's what's going on inside of you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I mean, I've seen some people in, the, in little little huts and all kinds of problems, but they just had joy in their heart. So if you wait for joy to come to you because you get more stuff or you get all this nice stuff around you, if it's not in your heart, you can forget it. So anyway, sin causes you to have the wrong vision and the wrong focus. Sin causes, now here's the big one right here. This is it right here. Now we're getting into it. Sin causes a break in your relationship with God. Now there it is right here. When you let your listening and your looking cause you to leap or to act against God, what that's going to do is it's going to cause a break in your relationship with God. I'm going to let that one sit in for a second. It's going to cause a break in your relationship with God. Now here's the thing. He's still, he's still your father but because he's totally holy, he can't just act like what you did is all right. One of the worst things parents do is when their children do something wrong, and, and, and I'm sorry, but I just got to tell the truth and shame the devil on this one. This is where women really got to watch it. 
because they have so much love. They have so, they're so, you know, emotional in their love for their children and their grandchildren that, that they got to be careful that when that child doesn't act right, they don't go, oh, that's okay, Sonny, I love Sonny, it's okay. It's all right that he shot 10 people and killed the Pope, but it's, it's all right, he's a good boy. He's a guy, he, my son, he's a good boy. No, it's just, it's something wrong with Sonny. He got a problem, and we got to call a spade a spade. In fact, you should have you should have called that one when you saw him killing them cats in the, in the backyard when he was growing up. Somebody say amen. amen. I'm just being honest with you. I mean, it's God love and mother's love. But see, it's like the name of this church, Truth and love. Say it's Truth and Love. Truth without love will grieve you. It will. How many of y'all try to tell people the truth and they get mad at you? Come on now. You tell people the truth and you know it's the truth. And you just tell, you tell, now you know that your, your attitude is not right. Now you know you should be in church. Now you know, you know you shouldn't be cussing like that. You know you shouldn't be disrespecting your parents like that. And you know, they're about ready to shoot you. Truth without love grieves you. It grieves people. It, 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 it gets, it, it, it offends them. But watch this. Love without truth will deceive you. When you love somebody but you don't tell them the truth, now you just lying to them. You, you're telling them, oh, that's okay, that's okay, Sonny, it's all right. You, you can have it your way. Well, then what, what happens when they get out there and they, they're facing the police? You know one of the things that people don't really talk about? Everybody talk about, you know, Black Lives Matter, and I'm, hey, there's a lot of bad police officers out there, but there's also some people out there, some black people out there, they do some dumb stuff. I'm just saying, you already know these people are scared and trigger happy and everything else. Last thing you should do is, you know, start taking off running or, or you know, whip out your phone. I'm sorry, but my wife messed it up there sometimes. She said, I can't be no police officer. She said, because I'd be shooting, I'd be scared. <laughs> you know, it's like knowing what you got. I mean, you don't know who, what somebody got. I mean, just think about it. There's two sides to this thing. You really don't know what you got when you pull somebody over. And, 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 and the truth be told, when you see these shootouts, the, the, the criminals or the, you know, the people they're trying to arrest, they got more firepower than the cops. You know, the cops got, you know, the, the nine millimeters or whatever, and them, them guys coming with the bazookas and, and AKs and machine guns and everything else. Shoot, I'd be like, you know, call SWAT, you know, <laughs> let them come in here. So what I'm saying is that, yes, there are, there are people to take advantage of back out, but, but don't you have a lack of wisdom? you shooting your mouth off. Be quiet. Oh, they did something wrong? Fine. Live not only to tell the story, but to file this lawsuit. You know, live to, 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 live to make, live to tomorrow. That guy trying to get home, you're trying to get home too. I don't want to be a martyr for no reason. No. You, you, okay, it's humbling. They pushed me down. They did that, that, that. Hey, the way things are these days, one thing we learned is a camera going on somewhere. Yeah. Somebody got a camera going on. Somebody going to see something. Look, I got, I'm going to file a claim and some, I'm going to find out where the cameras were and I'm going I'm to get paid. But I don't, listen, I want to live and get paid. I don't want to die and let my mama get paid. Okay, no, 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 then the mamas are getting paid right now. But how many of you know if you gave them the opportunity, the choice, and said, what would you rather have? That, that, those few million dollars that they're getting ready to give you, or would you rather have your son back? Yeah. Come on, yeah, yeah. come on somebody. All right, sin causes a break in your relationship with God. What am I trying to say? I'm trying to say this. When you disobey God, he's still your father, but because he's a perfect father, God is the only perfect father. Because he's a perfect father, he can't let you get away with it. How many of you know that if, if you do the crime, you have to do the time even if you're a Christian? Can you, can, can you kill somebody and still get to heaven? Yeah. You can be on death row. And they may say, life, you never get out. But you can get saved and go to heaven. But see, but see, if is so and reap. If you do this, you got to you gotta get that. All right, so God said, oh, if you disobey me, 
you will surely die. Now, now, did, did Adam drop dead right after he disobeyed? No. Did he drop dead? No. But what happened was they began to they began to die physically, but the moment they disobeyed, it was spiritual death. The 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 the, the sweet fellowship that they had enjoyed with the Father that was that was done. That was done. Somebody say, stick a fork in it. It was done. Why? In other words, God said, because you did that, he said, I can't kick it with you like I used to in the cool of the day. And this place, this beautiful, beautiful resort called Eden, rent-free, mortgage-free, drama-free, disease-free, you got to get up out of here. I can't tell you where you're going to go, but honey, you can't stay here. Come on, you got to get up out of here. Oh, so you don't love me no more, God. God said, no, I love you. It's just that I had conditions, and the conditions had consequences, and now, and you had the choice, and now you're reaping the consequences of your choice. Church, when you, when you sin, it causes a break in your relationship with God. But here's the biggie. Now, here's the biggie I wanted to share with you today. A break in your relationship with the Father, with God, causes a break in your relationship with man. When you get a break in your relationship with God, it, it causes a break in your relationship with man. Now, I've been counseling, spiritually counseling people for over 20 years. Over 20 years. And it is, and it is in the last few years that God spoke to me and he told me this. He said, son, he said, you read a lot of books on this. Son, you had a lot of sessions on this. Son, you heard a lot of people talk about this. He said, but I'm going to give you counseling in a nutshell. I said, okay, God. You know what he did? He pointed me to this cross right here. He said, I said, oh, yeah, well, yeah, Jesus, yeah, okay. He said, no, no, no. He said, look again. He says, there's two plates there. There's a vertical and there's a horizontal. He said, that's counseling right there. He said, there's your relationship with God, and then the, the cross line is your relationship with man. If the up line is bad, the cross line is going to be bad too. Did you hear what I say? When you have a problem with God, you're going to have a problem with man. That's why nobody can come up to me talking about, I love God. It's just people I hate. I love God, but I'm a supremacist. Listen, the Bible, the Bible is clear. God said, if you love me, you'll love your brother. The proof that you love me is that you love your brother. If you have, but one of my father's favorite books said, how can you say you love God who you can't see and hate your brother that you see every day? Can I get an amen, somebody? So, so when you have a problem with your brother, who you really have a problem with is God. And if you want to get your marriage right, if you want to get your relationship right, you want to get your dating right, you want to get uh, your, 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 your relationship with your, your parents, your children, your relatives, whoever it is, your co-worker, your boss, child of God is the upline. Is something going on up there that's not right. Well, Pastor, but no, you don't understand what they did and what they do and da 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 da. It's not about what they did or what they do. It's not about that. It's about how you're responding to it. That's the problem. There's two things that happen after people do things. You can either react or respond. When you react, it's in the flesh. They, they you know, they, they, they hurt me. You know, I say, ow. They hit me, I hit back. But when you respond, it's by the Spirit. And guess who you receive? Oh, thank you, Holy Ghost. When you react, oh, thank you, Jesus. When you react, you react to them. When you respond, you respond to God. So help me, Jesus. Help me, Holy Ghost. Help me, Holy Ghost, right there. That's it right there. When you react, you react in the natural to what they did. But, but, but when you respond, you respond to what God said and did. You respond to the fact that he said, be the peacemaker. Be the forgiver. Be the bigger person. You respond to him. And he said this. He said, oh, good God of mine. One of my favorite scriptures, he said, he said, when people misjudge you, mistreat you, he said, commit your case 
unto the God who judges all things rightly, 1 Peter 2 and 23. In other words, don't, 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 don't worry about you trying to get them back. Don't worry about anybody trying to plead your case. Don't worry about any of that stuff. As long as you're right with me, I'll take care of it. Vengeance, come on church, y'all not hear me today, is mine, saith the Lord. But what we do, we react. And, and even if it's not something that's really acrimonious, even if it's somebody you love, like your wife, your husband, you know, they say something, and you, you know, I mean, it could be something as simple. My wife and I just had, uh, <laughs> we just had a little simple, little. It, it's a simple little thing that happened just the other day. And uh, I said something, we were in a, a text thread, and uh, in this text thread, uh, my children asked me a question, about a relative, and I said, oh, uh, he's, he's, I said, they asked me, who, is this relative married? And I said, no, he's not married. He's, his girlfriend's name is such and such, and he's not married. And then my wife came back in the thread, and she said, he's married, and his wife's name is X, Y, Z. And then my children started laughing, and they said, dad, she know more about your family than you do. Ha ha ha, they had LOL, and they were laughing me to shame, laughing me to score and everything else. And, 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 and the Lord said, be cool. Don't get into, it's, it's, it's nothing. It's, how many times do we get upset about some stuff that's just nothing? So we just talk about a fact, of, you know, just the fact of something, but then they, got, they chimed in laughing at me. I said, but but I did go back, but, but just for the sake of win. accuracy, win. I no, I wasn't trying to win. I was not. It was just because once you brought it up, I said, you know what? Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. So I had to. I went. My my sister Camille's over there laughing hard. She you can't tell because she got a mask on, but she laughed. She didn't know that she was the referee in this thing. So I just out of the blue. I, I know she probably said. So I went to her and I just said, oh, by the way, is he married or is he not married? She said, oh, no, he's not married and his girlfriend's name is exactly what I said. But, but I just said, I just said, honey, that's, I think that's what it is. But guess what? It's just trivia. It doesn't really matter. But here's the real point. Sometimes we can get, because this happens a lot. You know, we could be looking at something and we say, well, who played in that movie about such and such? Oh, that was Jack Ham. No, that was Ham Jack. And would be, and, and, and before you know it, it becomes like World War III. And it's like, what is going on? Oh, we're reacting to each other. We're not responding to God. Because the Bible says, blessed are the peace makers, for they shall be called the children of God. In other words, that's one of the key attributes of a child of God. Notice it didn't just say peaceful. It said peacemakers. You have to make peace with people. That's a conscious effort. You have to make peace. And, and, and more times than not, making peace with people, you know, making peace with somebody is very, very humbling. So let me get back to this. Uh, sin causes a break in your relationship with God. And then that break in your relationship with God causes a break in your relationship with man. In other words, when you're not filled with the Spirit, then you're going to react to each other's imperfections. And everybody got them. I heard, I heard the, the uh, I just heard somebody say this, one preacher, I don't know who I was listening to, but he just mentioned this. He said, he said, when the married couples come to his church, he says he gets them to repeat again what they said at the wedding, which is, I do. I do, I do, I do. He said, because in, in six months to a year, they'll be talking about, I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't. Because you walk into that thing, you're just like thinking, everything's going to be all rosy and everything's going to, but after you see that, oh, the, you know, it's more than the wedding. It's more than the, you know, the champagne and the, you know, whatever, the flowers and all those stuff. It's, it's the, the, the disagreements between people. And guess what? There's always going to be some disagreements unless you're a clone. Can I get an amen? 
I mean, think of all the reasons for disagreement. Well, let's see. Gender, age, how you were brought up, ethnicity. It could be a whole lot of reasons, you know, the, the, the way you were taught. But, but if you're under the Lordship of Christ, now it's not reacting, it's responding. What does the Word say? The Word says, walk in the Spirit, and what will happen? You won't fulfill the lust of the flesh. So guess what? When that break happened between uh, Adam and God, when that break happened between Adam and God, when that break happened between Adam and God, guess what immediately followed? A break between Adam and Eve. Can I get a name in somebody? Soon as that break happened between Adam and God, there was a break between Adam and Eve. Because the Lord comes to Adam and says, hey, Adam, what's up? Did, he said, did, don't you know what you did? And he said, look, it's not what I did. He said, it's that woman that you gave me. Before she was my lovely wife. Now it's that woman. <laughs> that woman. <laughs> it's that woman. So first of all, he's blaming God. And he's blaming the woman. Church, what I just explained to you was the origin of the blame game. Before there was sin between God and man, there, if, if, it's, if it's in the Bible and I missed it, please show it to me. I don't see any argument between Adam and Eve before there was sin. I don't see any counseling session, Autumn. I, I don't see any therapists come in between. between I, I don't see there any problems in their marriage before that. But after that, he said, hey. It was sister girl. And you know good and well what she said after that. She, I know she read him the right act because she's a life giver. I mean, see, man will do, a, do something, but a woman will give life to that thing. You think, you think you're telling a woman off? Come on, ladies, help me out now. Y'all should be really, amen, if you're right. You think you're telling a woman off? She'll really correct you. You'll really tell her. She'll go back to 1962 and what you did. You talking about, well, you didn't, you didn't serve me. You didn't make my potatoes right uh, yesterday. She'll be like, Negro, back in the, in the 60s, I told you not to do such and such. Like, how do you remember that? Did you your pastor when he said, let it go? Can it get that out your heart? Somewhere deep in there, it's in there, boy. Good God Almighty, I hope y'all this gonna be, that chain gonna be broken today in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Righteousness leads us to focus on God and ourselves. I gotta get to the most important part of this message. Here it is right now. I just said it. Sin, listen to me, sin always gets you, listen, to blame God and somebody else. But righteousness, this is, this is the message right here. I, everything I said before was just the hors d'oeuvre. This is the main meat and potatoes right here. Sin gets you to focus on what God did and what somebody else did. Every counseling session I've been, well, you know, they did this, they did this, they did this. I'm going to give you a free counseling session to save you a whole lot of money and a whole lot of time. Here it is. <laughs> righteousness gets you to focus on the goodness of God and the need of reformation on yourself. You're focusing on what somebody else did or didn't do, but I got news for you. The only person that you're in control of and the only person you can fix and the only person you should really be focusing on is you. Pastor, I, I want to let you know, I, I, I was at this church and I had issues with the deacons. Then I left. It sounded like one of those people told me recently they went from the Church of God in Christ to the, somebody that told me recently they went from Church of God in Christ to the Baptists, to the Pentecostals, to the Methodists, and ended up at the Saint, the Church of the Latter-day Saints. So let's just take this trip with him. Pastor, I was at the Church of God. Ooh, I had issues with the deacon board. Pastor, I went on to the Baptist Church. Ooh, I had issues with the pastor. Pastor, I went on to the church uh, at the Baptist. Ooh, I had issues with the first lady. Then I went to the Church of Latter Day Saints. Ooh, Pastor, I had an issue with the with the with the keyboard player. Ooh, he said he said, girl, he said that was a whole lot of issues. All I got to say is issue. <laughs> Ain't nobody else, brother. Ain't nobody else, sister. Is you. You 
better start looking. You talking about all these people and all they did and all they doing. But look in the mirror. Michael Jackson had it right. He's talking about, I'm looking at the man in the mirror. It's you. And church, I want you to know in every problem of our life, the focus should be on the goodness of God and the need of correction for ourselves. If each person has this approach, there will be humility. Oh, if every person will heed what I'm saying today, and I believe, declare, and agree that you will, what is going to happen is it's going to bring in humility, and humility is the gateway to unity. I'll say it again. If you will take a look at yourself, and you know, the, the Bible talks about this in Psalm 139 where it says, search me, Lord, and see if there be any wicked way in me. But what we want to do is we want to go around with a magnifying glass, search them, Lord, what is pastor doing? What's Reverend doing? What's all oh, the what's my kids doing? Ooh, them grandkids, ooh, them children, ooh, them things. everybody else but you. And if you listen, you if you turn that uh, 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 magnifying glass around and look at yourself, it's going to be humbling. And what is going to happen is, instead of you spending all the time talking about what they need to do, you're going to be working 24-7 on what you need to do. Can I get an amen, somebody? You, oh, Lord. You're going to be waking up every day. Lord, please set a guard over my mind. Lord, please set a guard over my tongue. Because you know, Lord God, I can, I can, I can go there. You know, Lord, I, I be saying some stuff, and after I say it, I'm so sorry I said it. I can't get it back. And then after it's out there, now it goes back and forth to tit and tat. But Lord, look, let, there's a one scripture says it like this: Let me study to be quiet. In other words, you can't. It, it's something God knows about you that you just can't be quiet on your own. You gotta study to be quiet. You gotta ask for God's help. You gotta say, Lord, take take my mouth and Hallelujah. Put put a put a put a lock on that thing, please, Lord God. Let me let me think before I speak. Let me let me really weigh before I say. Let me make sure that I've got this not running around like somebody talk. Let me give you a piece of my mind. But the, the, you're giving me a piece of your mind. But I wonder, is there any peace in your? mind? Mind. That's what I'm really looking for. I'm looking for the peace from your mind. I just want some peace up in here. But church, unity is the greatest thing. But division can destroy everything. Unity is the greatest thing that we can achieve. But it's also the hardest thing. It's the hardest thing to achieve. I, I told the church this uh, on Wednesday night, and I'm almost done. Isn't it interesting how there's three great spiritual principles? Faith, hope, and love. Guess what? You can do faith by yourself. Faith is obeying God. God tell you to do something, you just do it. There are times when y'all may have thought I was bragging or off or whatever. That's okay. You look at you. But there are times when God told me to do something and not even confer with my wife. That's not a I, it, it, yes, there needs to be constant communication in marriage, but there are some times when there are some things that God will tell you to do and not even talk to your spouse about because it deals with you and you just need to do it. I'm just being honest with you. I'm telling you my own experiences. Now, later on, they know whatever, but there's some times when God would do and vice versa. There's a time when she, it's the truth, there's a time when God would speak to her and say, you know, you you do this. What was she what's she gonna say? No, but I gotta ask as my husband. No, sometimes God will say, you do this and I need you to do it right now. But what am I trying to tell you is uh it's it's the hardest thing to achieve. But the vision that could destroy everything. And here's what I want to end with. If the devil can divide, and I want to focus now, especially on this unit call the family the, the 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 essential unit of the family the husband and the wife that is the that is the beginning of the family because without that there's no you know the children etc etc the relatives but that husband and wife if the devil and we see this in the garden if the devil can divide them then he can destroy the house the family and everything connected with them let me ask you this I want to make this point, and I want you to get it. 
before you got saved, you were a sinner. Why were you a sinner? Somebody said, well, because all of sin and come short of the glory of God. Yeah, that's true, and there's a scripture for that. But the real truth is, before you got saved, you were a sinner because you were born in sin and shaped in iniquity. You were born with a sin nature. Where did that came, come from? It came from that garden that I just talked about today. In other words, what I want you to understand is the devil understands the devilish, devastating power of the vision. That if he can break the husband and the wife, everything and everyone around them is impacted. And it can go on for generations and generations. And the, and, the, and the folk that come up didn't have anything to do with it, but they just inherited it. Sin was inherited. Y'all hear me? Sin was inherited from Adam and Eve. But Jesus, he broke that curse. And if you will what? Confess with your mouth and believe in your heart. Then you get born again. Then there's newness of life. What am I trying to tell you today? I'm trying to tell you that today we're going to pray for our couples. We're going to pray for the marriage. We're going to pray for everybody that has a relationship with anybody. But we want to start with the married couples because the truth be told, from what I can see with Adam and Eve, when they disobeyed God, they turned on each other. And then when they turned on each other, it's interesting to me that when they turned on each other, the very next chapter, their sons killed one another. Isn't that interesting? Right? There was no death, there was no murder, there was no crime, nothing. But right after they turned on each other and said, no, 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 you listen to them. No, you listen to them. No, it's your fault. People still argue that. Whose fault was it? They asked me when I was a young pastor, some youth that asked me that. Whose fault was it? Adam or Eve? They both, they both said. But what came about after that was such a devastation that it continued for generations and generations. Pastor Robin, would you come here, please? I don't want to do anything or ask you to do anything that my wife and I are not going to be the first partakers of. The Lord spoke this so clearly to my heart. He said, do you realize all the people that glean from this ministry, it, it, don't, don't get yourself fooled. You know, all the chairs might not be filled today because we're just coming back from a pandemic. But in a very short while, all these chairs will be full. And even then, it won't represent all the people that glean from this ministry. They're all over the country. They're listening right now. But if the upline gets broken with me and God or her and God, our house could be destroyed, and guess what? I'm here to tell you, it will affect everybody in here. Say amen. amen. Why do you think children whose parents divorce have such a hard time? It's hurtful, it's destructive. They, they're trying to heal from it, they're trying to overcome it. Don't nobody like to see their mom and daddy break up? And I got news for you. I got news for you. When the parents humble themselves and don't just stay together just to be together, but love each other and show that it has not generational curses, it brings forth generational blessings. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Generational blessings. The same way that things can be passed down, generations that are negative, they can be passed down on the positive. Amen. So I want you to first, we're going to do two things today. First of all, I want to humble myself and I'm asking my wife to humble herself and I want you all to pray for us because the Bible says, be careful when you think that you stand lest you fall. There's nobody so perfect that something couldn't happen and, and you react and not respond. And all of a sudden, you said, well, uh, you know, I ain't got to be here. No, you ain't got to be here. Well, get on there. Well, I'm going, I'm, you know what? Everybody got an ego. The 
person who says that they don't have any pride, they just lie. Everybody has pride. Can I get an amen? amen? So the first thing I want is I want you all to pray for us. And after you pray for us, then I want everybody to stand because everybody here has a relationship with somebody. It's going to be a specific emphasis on married couples, but on everybody in relationship. Then, I'm, then we're going to, we are going to pray for you because there are people that you're connected with that if you go down, if your house is destroyed, it can destroy them too. It can destroy them too. Uh, I prayed about this, and I believe uh, I'm right about this. Minister Martha, you are still the matriarch of our family. You lived with us. My wife humbled herself. My God, she humbled herself to God, to me, and to you, and allowed you to live with us for five or six years. And so not only are you near and dear to us just from a standpoint of being my mom, but you, you, you've, been our, you, you've been her mom too. That's right. That's the best way of saying it. I want you to come and I want you to pray um, for us so that we will always keep our relationship with God right and therefore keep our relationship with these others right so that we can pass down, thank you, brother, that which is good and godly and holy to everybody that gleans from us. Because the Bible says pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. It's the reason that so many people, or right, watch this. They say the the percentage of divorces in the world, I just heard this recently, is 48%. So what does that tell you? The percentage of divorces in the church are what? 52. That's what I just heard. What is that telling you? That's telling you that we're called to be distinctively different, but we're doing things the same way as the world's doing. We're doing the same, the same way. So, so without this, we all can be like, well, I'm out of here. I can make money. I wouldn't wouldn't I can do bad all by myself. I can do good all by myself. You know, you can probably hey, I I ain't got to do nothing. Stay black and die. You know, I, I ain't got to do that. I, I, uh, 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 all that kind of stuff. It takes humility to remember what you vowed and remember what you said before God. And when it doesn't feel right, when it feels tight, to say, you know what? I gave up my right to get out of this. I said, till death do we part. Now I got to go beyond just that and make it good. Because nobody wants to stay in something that's just, we just, you know, just tread water. We in it, but but in name only. So, Minister Martha, would you come, please? Y'all show her some love as she comes. She's a matriarch of the Tucker, the Walter Tucker family. And uh, I want us to, uh, in fact, I'm going to ask the brethren to bring two chairs. Two chairs. We're going to sit right here. Brother Spencer, bring me one. Brother, bring me one right here. Bring this one right here on the end. I, I mean, that's fine. Yeah, bring us some chairs and we'll sit down. Y'all stretch your hands toward us, please. For this really rare and special occasion, when we're talking about the beginning of the family, the beginning of life as we know it today. We've had so many generations, so many generations to go before us. So many problems so many prayers, and we give you thanksgiving. He said when we pray, if we can get our prayers high enough, if we can just get them high enough, we'll have a host of witnesses in heaven to help us. So I'm calling on that host of witnesses, all of our four parents who have gone before us, and they join us in this prayer today because 
a new beginning starts with the first step. Thank you, Father. And so, Father, we're thanking you so much for this moment, for this root that is going to grow in the grounds of this church through the Love Christian Church. We're not going to be just about the words. We're going to be about the works. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. You know, a lot of the modern teachings, you know, you know, grace just gives us everything. The pastors pointed out the ifs and the buts. We do have our jobs to do. Yes. And one of the jobs and one of the most important jobs is to start this deep-seated, deep-seated prayer for couples, for children of those couples, for adoption of people into the homes of those couples. It's all of my children, every one of them. I've lived with everybody but Kenneth. So you actually, and Kenneth, you all better watch out because I'm just be coming soon because God sends me where I'm supposed to go because there's something there to do to go for. Praise you, Jesus. Now, I hope it don't be too soon because I'm kind of tired of moving around right now, but glory, glory to God. I thank God for the grandchildren who are here today. I don't, we don't have to, I, I don't have to be close to these grandchildren but I make sure that I keep in touch with them because that's the only way you get to know somebody is to be in touch with them. So Father, that's why we are in touch with you today. First of all, I'm asking you for a blessing, a holy blessing, a gift of blessings to see and understand the offspring of who we have. They don't always look like they're worth saving, <laughs> to tell you the truth sometimes. But God, give us that spirit that sees you in each and every one of them. And I'm asking you to begin with my oldest son, Walter Rayford Tucker III. You had a special calling for him. You gave it to me, and I gave it to him. And he has passed it down to his children. And most times they were kicking and screaming. But Lord, if you would look at them now, we can say we are a witness to what God can do with our children when they fall down and we just standing right there to hold them up. Because our prayers are being answered by you, Lord, by you. And that is to every person in here there are some of our young people who are not even here today, some of them who are in that. Lord, put your hands on them from the hearts and minds and prayers of their parents. And we have to know with certainty, Lord, that you hear us. You have to know that you have given us what to say to them, how to say it, how to step back and let them make their mistakes because we surely when they make those mistakes they will come back to you they will come back as sure as they live and I thank you and praise you for your promises I thank you and praise you for your goodness I thank you for your ability to do anything and anything that there is to be done only through your power, only through your love. You said my power is above everything that faces my children, my grandchildren, my great-grandchildren. I have three great-grandchildren. These couple here have three natural grandchildren and they have a church full of others. So, Father, we thank you and praise you that you have put them together for a reason. You put them together to minister your word to all of those around them. And I give, ask God you give them the power, give them the love, give them the insight. Give them your promise 
that you will see them through to see a generation or many generations of people who will take care of the promises, push the children, that they may take care of the promises and it goes thousand generations down. If we're in this world that long, however long it is, I ask you to bless this couple to have been an influence that goes generations down, making the life of this world a better place to live. Oh, a mission, a mission, omission, commission. Lord, we ask you to bless them, to keep them safe, to keep them prospered, to keep them full of joy. And for these things, we give you thanksgiving, and we give you praise, and we give you honor. We don't just praise you, we worship you. We worship you. Come on, let's worship the Lord. Because what you promised, you will also perform on. These are not my, these are not just my son. This is my daughter. She's not my daughter-in-law. She, you know, we have our little times too, but we know we are one. We cannot be broken. They cannot be broken. And you cannot be broken because the Lord, your God, has all power to do all things right, and he's the only one who can do it perfectly. You know, people can get away with certain things, but they will come back. They will come back and God will answer in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Give me a hug. I'm going to ask for. Uh, married couples to come to the altar. Anybody who's married, anybody who um, is a dating couple, anybody who wants to be married, would you come to the altar, please? If you're dating, want to be married, if you're married, and your spouse is not here, come to the altar, please. I'm going to ask that uh, uh, Sister Crystal, would you get Diamond and tell her to come out? They can release the children out here, but I want Diamond to tell us to the altar. Yes, if you're desiring to be married, come on.
there was a couple, a man and his wife that you said are the family, which means that you ordained the family even before you ordained the church. You ordained the family before you ordained the government. This is the central unit of society that holds up society. And we've been trying to get other aspects of society to be and to do what only the family can be and do. It comes down to that house, as Joshua said, as for me and my house, me and my house, you gave us control over their house, you gave Adam control over his house, his house was called Eden, and the devil wanted to destroy the family, and destroy the family, he could destroy the house, and destroy the house, he could destroy the people, but today we declare and decree Satan that you are bound, and you are defeated, and you're cast out of the family, and you're cast out of the house, and you're cast out because you're cast out of the minds, of the family, the original components of the family, the man and his wife, the husband and the wife, the 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 the, uh, the head and the healthy, you cast out first and foremost of their spirit because their spirit belongs to you. You cast out of their minds, their minds belong to you. You, hallelujah, today we speak a word of humility and the fruit of the Spirit, let all the fruit of the Spirit abound over these families. Love, joy, peace, patience, hallelujah. Oh yes, thank you Lord, turn to your spouse. Yes, 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 turn to your spouse in the name of Jesus. That's what I'm hearing, that's right, turn to him. Look at him, turn to him, hallelujah. Those of you who, uh, you know, were without them physically, then just look up. But right now, in the name of Jesus, I say, let the fruit of the Spirit abound. Love, joy, peace, patience. Yes. That you would stay under the mighty hand of God, even through trial and tribulation, persecution, misunderstandings. Hallelujah. That there would be, there would not be offenses, but there would be forgiveness. Hallelujah, goodness and gentleness, kindness, meekness, humility, the humility to apologize and the humility to receive an apology, the, the humility to ask for forgiveness and the ability to forgive, faithfulness, temperance, Against such there is no law. Father, we thank you that this is a renewing and a refreshing of the family. Yes, Lord. And Lord, our focus is on you and on ourselves. We are focused to make sure that no corrupt communication comes out of our mouth. We are focused to make sure that we're the practice of bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. We are focused to respond to you and not react to them in the name of Jesus. And I say today, Satan, I serve you notice, you're, you're done for here. You, you cast you out, we cast you away, and you will never return. Not to this household, in the name of Jesus, the blood of Jesus covers. The blood of Jesus cleanses. The blood of Jesus keeps in the name of Jesus. Only God knows what's in your heart. Only God knows your hurts. Only God knows what you've been through in your relationships, in your past relationships. And if you're here and you're looking up to God, expecting a new relationship to come, a new relationship to come, he's going to give you one that doesn't have the stuff you had before. Hallelujah. And he's taken away the stuff that has hurt you and offended you right now in this relationship. And we thank you, God, because it's a new day. We're living a new life, newness of life. Because of what you did at the cross. When you died in Calvary for us. For you when you were dead and you were buried and you rose on that third day for us. We know 
that you have heard our prayer. You have heard our cries. Because in the psalm you say, cry to me. Cry out to God and he will hear you. Cry out to God for your spouse. Look up to Jesus for who it is that you want in your life. The type of person that will represent Christ in your life. Who will treat you sweet. Who will help you to be a strong man of God. Who will hold up your arms like Aaron. Who will hold them up when you need some help as a man. That help me that you want. Hallelujah. Whatever it is. Leave it at the altar today for newness of life. There are some things, like Pastor said, way down on the inside that a woman can bring back up easily. Are we really healed from it? Be healed today. By his stripes you are healed today. In your mind, body, soul. By his spirit in your inner man. That's where the power comes from to release so that you can receive the newness of life. If there's an offense, though, you have to tell the person, but in love, so that it can be known what it is, so that it won't keep repeating itself. Keep happening over and over and over again that stabs you like a knife. But get that release today. Be able to say what the offense is today and release it and ask God for forgiveness because you held on to it and ask the person to forgive you for making the offense on them are both ways vice versa we all have offended someone we all have sinned and come short of the glory of God but today we want to reach up to you God reach up then we can reach out to me Hold your arms out. Couples, hold your arms out if you're reaching out up to God. Hold them up first. Let the power of God fall down into your hands and anoint your hands. Anoint your mind. Anoint your body. Now take those same arms and wrap them around your spouse. Hallelujah. Wrap them around your spouse who's not even here today, who's coming. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See it. See it. See it. See it. Thank him for it. Trust him. Believe it. Believe it in your heart today. Thank you, God. Chains, I hear the chains falling. I said, I hear the chains falling. Chains are falling. I hear the chains falling. I hear the chains falling. Yes, I do. Love them. He said, I hear the chains There's many things that you've done against me, but I kept loving you. Be merciful to them as I have been merciful to you, says the Lord. Father, we thank you for the healing. Lift every hand now. Thank you for the healing today. Thank you that we'll never be the same in Jesus' name. There's a new thing that has happened here today, and we're going to walk in it. We're going to walk in what we've been taught to the glory of God. This is the new time, the, you, the new launching Thank of the marriage ministry here at Truth and Love Christian Church. So be ready when we reach out to you because it's time to walk in the newness you, of this wonderful uh, marriage enrichment ministry. And it's going to be a blessing to you and your family in the name of Jesus. Hearts have been healed today. Hallelujah. Things have been forgiven today. Hallelujah. Chains have been loose today. Hallelujah. We thank you, Lord God, for the victory. The victory is ours in the name of Jesus. Now may the Lord bless you. May the Lord keep you. May his countenance shine upon you. May the Lord bless you with peace. In Jesus' name, go forward. Thank you, Lord. I love everybody. God bless you.